Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Welcome, my friend. Thank you so very, very much for joining us today. Thank you for letting me be part of your day. Right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Galatians and chapter 1. In a moment, I'll begin reading at verse 15. If you can, get your Bible out and join me there. Galatians chapter 1 and beginning at verse 15. In my hand right now is one of the gospel tracts that we publish here. I'll say more about it in a moment. If you are a person who has a child at home, you deal with children, you have grandchildren, you have people at your church that deal with children, we need to give tools to the people who have children to explain as clearly as possible at their, from their vantage point their need for Jesus Christ as Savior. I want to talk to you about one of our children's tracks, and you be ready for that. You may want to get a piece of paper and pen ready so that at the end of the broadcast you can jot down how to get this track and also a, sa- a sample packet containing one each of all of our English tracks. You can get that sample pack sent to you absolutely free of charge. And if you'll just communicate with us, giving us your name and address, I'll say more about that here in a moment. When we began our study in the book of Galatians, I began with a strange question. If you were listening, you may remember this. The question I asked way back at the beginning was this. How would you introduce Jesus Christ to those who already know him? Well, today I have another strange question, but it's from the same vantage point. My question today is this. How would you explain the gospel to a saved person? How would you explain the gospel to a saved person? Now, 99 times out of 100, when you and I speak about explaining the gospel, we are talking about how do we do that? How do we tell the gospel story to a person who needs Christ as Savior? But we are now, right now, dealing with that one unique time out of a hundred when we are explaining the gospel to a person who knows Christ as Savior. That's the text before us and the context in which we find it. Telling the gospel to a lost person obviously is done from their perspective. They need to receive Christ. They must believe on him. They need to repent and so on. When we're talking about telling the gospel to a saved person, at that point, we're talking about the gospel from God's perspective. What did God do? How did God do the work of salvation? And so on. Those are the things we're talking about. But friend, only people who have been born again, only those people can understand salvation from God's perspective. And that's what we have in front of us today. Get your Bible and join me, Galatians and chapter 1. That gospel track I mentioned a moment ago, it's in my hand. It's entitled, Are You Afraid? Are You Afraid? If you deal with children very much at all, you know that there are many things that can create and do create fears in the mind of children. Things like fear of strangers, and they need to have some fear of strangers. Fear of animals. Many children are afraid that their parents are going to get divorced. Fear of storms. Fear of death because they've heard that uh, their friend Susie down the street, her grandmother died, and they have these questions going on. Many, many things come into the heart and mind of a child that create fear. We have designed, we have written this track and designed this track to help a lost child come to know Christ by dealing with their fear. Now, friend, the gospel of Jesus Christ was not given first and foremost to help a child deal with their fears. The gospel was given to a child to help them know their sins are forgiven. We're just coming at the gospel from the vantage point of their fears and we want to give them the clearest presentation of Christ we can, and this gospel track does that. 
Are you afraid? I want to send this to you, please. Now, listen, at the end of the broadcast, my announcer is going to come on. He's going to be giving you about all oh, three ways or so in which you can communicate with us, giving us your name and your mailing address. When you do that in the very next business day's mail, I will send out to you free of charge a complete sample packet of all of our English gospel tracks. Now, let me do that, please. Make today the day that you follow through in the plans you've been wanting to do, and let's become partners in the gospel. Well, come with me, please. Galatians chapter 1, verse 15 says this, But when it pleased God who separated me, remember this me here is the Apostle Paul, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I may preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Let me stop reading right there. Now, we mentioned here a moment ago about how we began our study in the book of Galatians, asking uh, if how would you go about introducing Jesus Christ to people that already know him? Well, if you were listening yesterday on the broadcast, my focus then was, who does God save? Is there anybody beyond the ability of God's grace to save? And the answer is no, there is not. My focus today, though, is a little bit different. Today's focus is this, how does God save sinners? All I'm doing as we're walking through the book of Galatians is trying to help you and I see what God has put in the passage before us. Rarely, by the way, well, matter of fact, I don't know of any passage where one single passage gives all the truth on a particular topic. Now, whether we're talking about prophecy or the Trinity or the doctrine of angels or the doctrine of the local church, to give a full-orbed teaching on what the Bible says, you're going to have to compare Scripture with Scripture. And so that is true with the doctrine of salvation. The passage before us will not give all the facets of it. The facet it gives today is salvation from God's perspective. Did God use people to get the gospel into the Apostle Paul's life? Absolutely, he did. But those people are not even spoken of here in this passage. The point of Galatians chapter 1, verses 10 to 24, is to help us see that Paul preached a message that he received from God. The gospel came from God. He preached heaven's gospel, not a gospel designed by men. Verses 13 through 24 is a section of the chapter I've entitled, The Introduction to God's Servant. And obviously the apostle Paul is God's servant I'm referring to. Verses 13 and 14, we find Paul's past. What was he like before he was saved? Verses 15 through 19 gives us Paul's preparation, his preparation to be saved and to preach the gospel. How was Paul prepared to be the preacher of the gospel? Well, to be a preacher, you must be born again. So that's where we begin. Let me use some words that begin with the letter C. The first one is the word catalyst. Who is the catalyst in Paul's salvation? Look at verse 15. And when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb. What prompted the apostle Paul to get saved? Well, it was God. Now remember, no man seeks after God. The book of Romans teaches that. Paul sure was not looking to be saved when he was there on the road to Damascus the day he came to know Christ. Verse 15 says that saving Paul's soul and making him an apostle pleased God. Salvation does help us, and it does deal with our, but it deals with our sin. But salvation really is not helping us have a better life and so on. Salvation is ultimately about the glory of God. Salvation exists because it pleases God to save sinners. It pleases God, or it was the, to, the, to the good pleasure of God, both to save his soul and then to make him a preacher. Saving Paul's soul, so uh, so pleased God that God separated Paul uh, to the experience of saving grace even before Paul was born. Now, that's what the verse says. Is God allowed to do that kind of thing? Well, I guess he is because he says here that that's the way he did it. Not only are we told about God being the catalyst of Paul's salvation, we find here the calling that God did in Paul's life. That's my second word that begins with the letter C. 
What calling was this? Does it talk about here? When it says here in the verse fifteen, when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by His grace, what calling was this? Well, verse fifteen says it was the calling to reveal Christ in Paul. This verse is not about God. How God got the gospel out through the apostle Paul but it's about how God got the gospel into the life, into the heart of Paul. How did God save Paul? God, well, the verse says, God revealed the truth about Jesus to him. Now, dear soul winner friend, dear saved person, we must keep our theology of evangelism correct. We got to keep it straight. You and I are tools for God giving out the gospel. We are tools in God's hands. We need to be clean tools, and we also need to be clear tools, giving a clear message of the gospel. We need to hone our skills in giving the clearest message of the gospel we can. But after salvation has been explained to the lost person, then it's solely in the hands of God. Only God can enable the blindness of a sinner to be taken away for them to see the light of the gospel. Only God can connect the dots, so to speak, of the truth of the gospel and let a sinner understand. Only God can bring conviction of sin, bring faith, bring repentance. And until God does these things, nobody's getting saved. The clearest message we could possibly give without the work of God is going to bring nothing. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Is there a dear family member or friend that you long to see come to know Christ as Savior? I hope there is. Then, my dear friend, do not give up your role in telling the gospel. That's your job. That's your God-given job. Tell them the gospel. Tell it to them again and again and again. Then pray. Pray that God will do his role. Pray God will reveal his son in their hearts. Pray God will open their eyes to the truth so that you can see them respond and rejoice in it. Pray that God will give the grace of his conviction of sin, give them faith to believe, bring repentance to their soul. That's what he does. Salvation is a work of God. We don't need to get frustrated. We need to get busy telling the gospel. God has designed the means of giving out the gospel, but God has designed also the means by which a sinner responds, and that is God revealing his son in them. In the meantime, my dear friend, remind that lost sinner friend, that lost loved one of yours, that today is the day of salvation. Now, do all of these things seemingly go together in my, my human thinking? Sometimes they don't. I'm just telling you what the Bible does say in the clearest passages of the Word of God. Does God have a role in salvation? Yes, it's his salvation. He works it. But he's given us the responsibility to tell it. So let's do our part with all of our might, with all of our breath, until Christ comes for us. Let's tell the gospel with lost people, and then let God do his work and rejoice and give God the glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.